Hey, today I wanted to talk about 3D printing. Uh, 3D printing is basically being able um, to take parts and print them out. Uh, usually they're out of, out of plastics. There's other uh, materials, 3D printers out there that do it on other materials. But uh, today we're talking about the ones you can purchase today for the consumer, like the MakerBot, uh, and what it could do. So this video is going to be from concept, drawing the part, to actually print in the part. So here's an example of a, uh, of a printed part that I did for my Ruger 1022. The Ruger 1022 mag floor plate basically slits, uh, sits flush on the magazine well. And what happens is when this is a fully loaded mag and, you have, um, and you're in the range, sometimes it doesn't sit or seat in, in there very well. So what I did is I created a 3D uh, model of the floor plate and I basically extended it. So when the magazine is inserted into the, ma into the gun, it gives me a little bit more room to push up the magazine. So I know it has a good, uh, it's, it's in there good. So here are some of the samples I was talking about. Um, so you can see sometimes it takes certain um, steps to get to get to the to the appropriate product. So this is like my first one here. I spray painted it black just to see if uh, black paint would uh, will hold up on it. You can see it's very boxy. Um, actually, I have some design flaws on here as well. That as you go through, you kind of learn what mistakes you have, and you kind of go to next generation. So this is the next generation one that I did. Once again, it's still kind of boxy on the end. Um, added some 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 savings to the plastic, some holes there for to save on plastic. You know, like a cutout here and a cutout there. And then to the last one that I created, which now is the the same one that's on the magazine here, where it's rounded off to you know match the gun. Um, all the corners have been rounded off, and all my design mistakes from the first one um, are, have been fixed. So 3D printing does sometimes take more than one try. 100% uh, of the time it always takes more than one try. But uh, that's what we're going to talk about and, and, and go through those steps and those learning process together. Alright, so let's put this aside. And here's what we have for today. We're going to do some a little bit more simpler to draw out than a uh, floor plate because this would take forever to draw <laughs> and I know you guys don't want to be here that long. So what we have here is I have an old stereo which I have lost the the knob to turn it on and off on. This is a radio that goes it's in the garage so really not a big deal usually uh, but I want to get that knob replaced. Now I could call the manufacturer probably won't spend that much. It'll probably send it to me for free if I if I ask. But I thought this would be a fun project to go over with you guys so we can see it. And um, so let's get started. So the first things we need to do is we need to measure. Uh, this, so the knobs were pretty much identical. So I took the measurements off of this knob and off of this D channel as well and basically just uh, took some notes and Grab all my all the things I think I'm going to need uh, to be able to draw this part out on the computer. Um, you know, using some calipers or you know some some type of measuring device, um, and just capture all that information. So with now that I have this information, let's move to the computer and actually draw the part. We're going to draw this in Autodesk Fusion 360. Okay, so here we are in Autodesk Fusion 360. So now that we have the measurements for our knob, let's go ahead and get started drawing. So this is where 360 kind of drops you off at uh, when you start a new uh, new file. And what we're going to start with is we're going to start with a sketch. And we're going to go to a circle and we're going to do a center diameter circle. And it's going to ask you, well, where, what plane do you want to start at? So we're just going to select one. And that's going to be our top view. So we know that the uh, base 
of the circle. That's where I'm going to start out is 0.64. So I'm going to do that for 0.64 inches and hit enter. And then I'm also going to draw the top as well. I'm going to sketch the top circle as well, which is I'm going to do a center point circle again. And I know that one is 0.55. Okay. So as you can see, we have basically a flat 2D sketch there. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to take that inner circle right here and I'm going to need to move that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the circle itself. You see how it highlights there? And I'm going to move that by right clicking on it and selecting move. And I'm going to choose this top arrow and scroll up. Now here it gives me a chance, I don't know if you see here on the Z distance here, it gives me a chance to actually manually enter a number. I'm going to enter 0.55 because that's how high it was. And as you can see, now we have basically two 2D shapes, one above the other. So we need to make this into a 3D shape. It's real simple. We're going to go to Create, and we're going to loft these two sections. So one and, and two. And as you can see, it's going to create a new body. So we're going to, the operation is to create a new body here. And there we go. Hey, starting to look like a knob there. Now, I don't know if you noticed on the picture, but on the knob itself, it's not quite this sharp. There's a little bit of a radius there. So we're going to do that. We're going to just add a fillet. I'm going to select that circle. As you can see, it's highlighted blue. And we're going to uh, go to modify and fillet. And it's going to give me the radius there. And I'm going to do 0 0.01. And if we look at the front view here by clicking on front, you can see that's a nice little curve there. All right, so let's zoom out. All right, next thing we got to do is do the D channel. Uh, for this, I'm actually going to turn off the bodies. Anytime you, you see these little light bulbs here, you can actually turn off and on different things. So I'm going to turn off the body. And I'm going to turn on the original sketch, which they automatically turn off once you do an operation. And what we got to do is we got to create uh, the D channel for uh, for the knobs. So we're going to go back to circle and once again I'm going to do center point and it's going to ask me well what plane do you want to draw this at? And I want to draw it on this plane here so I'm going to select that and it's going to take me back to the top view and that's fine and we're going to add a point 214. That's how big that channel was. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a line I know from the top, I don't know if you notice these snaps, but it snaps to certain objects. And if you snap it to two different objects, um, it's going to select that particular area. So I'm going to mouse over the circle and then scoot up so I can get, uh, so I can start the line at the very top of the circle. And I know the line is uh, 0.214 and it's at 90 degrees and we're going to hit enter, enter. And there we go. There's our line. Actually, nope, control Z. I messed up. So I'm gonna actually delete this circle. I'm gonna sketch another circle. I, I made that circle too small. The actual D channel diameter is 0.25. That's that was my fault. So now we're gonna sketch that line. Once again, I'm gonna circle over and then go to the top. Scroll down and enter 0.214. There we go. Enter. Enter. All right. So I'm going to do another line from here to here, and then from here to here. All right. So now we have our, our, our D channel here. So I'm going to stop the sketch, and there it is. I'm going to hide the body one more time. I automatically put it up. And I'm going to select just the D part. So I'm going to go ahead and you see how it highlights different sections so I'm gonna select that section then I'm gonna shift and select that section and I'm gonna put the bodies back on and I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna say extrude I want to extrude that up let's go as far as we want and then click OK and now as you can see we cut a hole out from that knob last thing we need to do is basically 
the uh, dial indicator where it's pointing at. And I know in this particular uh, setup that the uh, settings are facing towards the flat part of that channel. So I'm going to go ahead and make it go this way. So, but I need to do this on top of the circle. So what I'm going to do is we're going to sketch another circle. We're going to do once again, center diameter circle. And this time I'm going to select this top section. You see how it highlights like that. And I know it's 0 0.05. Enter. And if I go to a 3D view, oh, it didn't do it where I wanted it to. So control Z. Let's do that again. So I'm going to stop the sketch. I'm going to turn off the body. I'm going to go sketch, circle again, center diameter, and I'm going to select this one, 0 0.05. Let's see if it put it on top there. No, nope, it keeps going back default into the bottom one. So I'm going to stop sketch. Let's create sketch then. Sketch, create sketch, select that, and then I'm going to sketch circle center point there we go point zero five all right and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a line from here to here and I'm going to do oh, let's see well, as close as we can um, mm, Let's do 0.275 is good. And then escape. So we have a line there. I'm going to sketch a circle. This time I'm going to do two point. And I want to do it from the beginning of that line up to point uh, 0.05, same size. And now I'm going to delete this line. I don't need this line anymore. I'm going to sketch two more lines. So I want to go mouse over the circle uh, over the center so I get the center point snap and I'm gonna get that snap and once again I'm gonna do the same here I'm gonna do the same here click because I'm still in the operation and enter alright now we can stop that sketch now we have that section we can select it um, sometimes you have to zoom in a little bit there we go uh, there we go I'm gonna select this section here I'm going to select this section here. This once again, that's shift. We have a body on, and I'm going to extrude this, and I'm going to go negative 0.1 or 0 1, and then click OK. And there it goes. There's our little indicator. So there we go. We have our button completely done. Next thing we need to do is export this to a format that my 3D program can read. So what we're going to do is we're going to file, export, and I'm sorry, my 3D printer can read. And I'm going to cancel that. I did the wrong one. We're going to go to 3D print, and then I'm going to select it. And I'm going to say hi. And then I'm going to say do not send the 3D printer out. What I want to do is basically um, um, it is create a file so I can put it in an SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to save this as knob STL because it's an STL file. And then I'm going to hit save. Since I already made this knob once, I'm not going to save this. But I'm going to go ahead and um, you would hit save. And then we can get out of um, Autodesk 360. OK. Now we need to, uh, since we're going to be using the MakerBot printer, downloaded their software, and we need to convert the file one more time. So what we're going to do is we're going to add um, that particular file that we just created into their software, which is MakerBot Desktop. So we're going to go File and Open, and then we're going to file find our knob. And that says, um, it's going to give you an error message. Hey, would you like to resize? It's very small. And that's because we did it in inches. Now, a lot of these 3D programs are actually done in millimeter. So one thing to keep in mind, uh, you may have to scale it up depending on what program you have. Uh, the MakerBot software automatically resizes for you. So I'm going to go ahead and rescale it. 
and then we're going to move it to the platform um, just so it's on the platform but, but you notice that it's probably not best to print it this way so we want to put it on its end so what we're going to do is going to click here and just click the X 90 degrees and bam and then we're going to lay flat so it's flat on the on the surface and there we go um, at this point we can uh, export this to a file so we can put it on our SD card uh, so we can get to the printer but if you had the printer hooked up to this com particular computer you can print it directly from here uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna export and we're gonna click export now and we're gonna save it to a knob x3g file and this is a file format that the printer can read I'm gonna hit cancel since I've already created one but you would click save and then we'll be ready to copy this over to an SD card and then take it over to the 3d printer so here we're at the printer we put the SD stick in and we're ready to rock right we are just go ahead and let's do a thing So I'm going to fast forward this uh, because it takes about 15 minutes to actually create the part. And there we go. It's done. So we're back after printing the knobs. As you can see, I did three knobs. Uh, I had a mistake on the first version where the dial indicator was uh, not shallow enough also the D channel was too small so I had to increase both of those on the second version that I made um, I printed them both out with these flat base and I noticed that uh, there was a nut there that wouldn't let this go all the way in so I had to basically hollow out the knob on the bottom. I used to use the drill on this one just to do a test to see if it would work. And then I noticed that the dial indicator was pointing to the wrong uh, thing. So I had to move it 15 degrees as well. And then the final version of the button here as you can see is uh, pretty much what I wanted. As you can see it's not really you know perfect as far as you know 3d printing is not going to give you that perfect finish uh, at least not yet anyway so if that's what you're looking for definitely not going to happen with 3d printing but it's functional as you can see since this is going in the garage this is probably as far as I'm going to take it but you know you probably spray paint it silver to match uh, but you know do what you like at least uh, I hope this video shows you what it takes to 3D print an object. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Thank you.